What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to determine continuity of piecewise functions. So we're going to go through these five questions here, and let's get started. So for these questions, we have the formal definition of continuity, but this is a nice step-by-step -step approach to answering these questions. And what we want to do is determine if f of x is continuous at x equals 3. Now, the first thing we should try to do is show that the limit exists. So if we're trying to show that the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x exists, we're going to target the top portion of this piecewise function where x is not equal to 3 because when x is not equal to 3, we could approach it from the left and right side. Now, you'll notice that quadratic on top. You have x squared minus 4x plus 3. That preemptively, I just want to go ahead and factor as x minus 3 times x minus 1. And now this is all being divided by x minus 3. Because if we wanted to evaluate this limit in the original form, we're going to get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. So we'd have to do this algebra anyway. So now we cancel out the matching factors. And when we plug in, we have x minus 1. So we're replacing x with 3. We have 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. So the limit does exist. So this is a good start for us showing this function is continuous at x equals 3. But now we want to show the function is defined at x equals 3. And if we investigate f of 3, this is just the point this is the point 3 comma 2 so the function value at 3 is equal to 2 so this is also checking out here and now the last thing that we have to be able to show is that the limit and the function are equal in this case at x equals 3 you notice the limit was equal to 2 and the function value was equal to 2 so we can say that this function is continuous at x equals 3 so we, we went ahead and showed the last step here now, just for a little bit more insight as to like what actually happened, and if we look at a little sketch of this, this will help us understand a little bit more. Notice all we were left with was x minus 1. And if we provide a little sketch of this, x minus 1 is a line, and it looks a rough sketch something like this. So this is at the point 1, and then 2 is out here, 3 is out here. So what we just found here was at x equals 2, this would go up to 1. And at x equals 3, this is going up to 2. So temporarily, because x is not equal to 3, this is a line with a hole in it here. But notice that the point 3, 2 goes exactly where the hole in the line is, going ahead and like filling this gap, making this a continuous function. If this was any other number but 2, then the function would be not continuous at x equals 3. But this did work out for us, so this function is in fact continuous at x equals 3. So for this next example, we'll start the same way. We want to show that the limit exists, but this time we want to see if g of x is continuous at x equals 1. So if we take the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x, we're going to factor this quadratic expression, and it would factor as x plus 1 times x minus 1, and we have an x minus 1 on bottom. So when these cancel out, we're left with x plus 1. So when we plug in x equals 1, we have 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So the limit does exist. But notice this time around, if we look at the function value, and now this is for g of x, the function value at 1 is equal to 4. So right away, I would say this is not continuous at x equals 1 because the limit and the function are not equal. So this last step is not satisfied. If we want to investigate this a little bit more, we could just look at a rough sketch of this and see that if we look at the left over here, the line x plus 1, so we'll just get a little sketch here. So these would be the intercepts. So once again, this is just a rough sketch. But notice everything that's going on is at x equals 1, that the limit is equal to 2, but the function value was equal to 4. So this is a situation here where we once again have a line with a hole in it, but the function value here is up top. So this would be a removable discontinuity. If this y value here was equal to 2, then this function would be continuous. But since they're not equal, we can say this function is not continuous at x equals 1. So for this type of function, we want to show the same thing, that the limit exists, the function is defined, and show that those two things are equal. But this time around, we have a slightly different piecewise function. To show that the limit exists, it's a little bit different. Now we have to investigate what is the left side limit of h of x and what is the right side limit of h of x. So when we do this, the thought process that we should be going through is we have to associate left side with less than. So what I mean by this is if I have some number line and the target value is x equals 2, when I think of the phrase 2 from the left, I associate that with x less than 2 because when I'm on the left side of 2, I'm looking at values less than 2. 
And when I'm looking at two from the right side, I associate that with x greater than two because values to the right of two are greater than two. All right, the only thing different here is I would just throw in this less than or equal to to match the actual question. But now, how does that help us? Well, when we want to find the limit as x approaches two from the left of h of x, we have to look at the x less than or equal to two piece. And instead of doing four times x minus two, we're gonna replace that x with two. And we have four times two is eight minus two is equal to six. And then when I investigate the limit on the right side of two, the right side of two, two plus, I'm looking at x greater than two, which is the top part of this piecewise function. So that's when I use the three x plus one. So I'm replacing that x value with two. And this is gonna give us seven. So notice right away, the left and right limits are not equal. So since the left and right limits are not equal, this tells us the limit doesn't exist. And if the limit doesn't exist, this tells us the function is not continuous at x equals two. I should just mention something real quick. These three dots mean therefore. It's just a nice abbreviation when you're writing explanations in math. So for the fourth question, we're gonna start the same way. But this one has a little bit of a trap sprinkled into it. That when I look at this right away, I automatically say that this function is not continuous at x equals one. And the fast way I could say it is that this function is not defined at x equals one. Notice here that p of one is undefined because for this piecewise function, we only have these intervals here for x greater than one, x less than one, but notice none of them include an equal to. So since p of one is undefined, this tells us we could say, and therefore p of x is not continuous at x equals one. Okay, so last question here, we're looking at the function q of x. The first thing we wanna show is that the limit exists. So notice this is broken into three pieces. We have x less than zero, x equals zero, and x greater than zero. So if we wanna show that this limit exists at zero, first thing we could look for is what is the limit as x approaches zero from the left of q of x? So if I'm looking for the left side limit, so we're looking at zero from the left, that means I'm using the x less than zero. So when I evaluate this, this is the limit as x approaches zero from the left, and we're using the sine x over x piece. Now this is a famous limit. The limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is equal to one. If you forget this, you could always use L'Hopital's rule if you've learned that part of derivatives yet. But otherwise we could say this limit is equal to one. So now we wanna find what is the limit as x approaches zero from the right side of q of x. And for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use x greater than zero for zero from the right. So we're using this piece here. So what we could do is we're gonna take the limit as x approaches zero from the right, and we're gonna take this expression here and factor it. On top, we have four x squared plus two x. So we have a greatest common factor of two x, and we would be left with two x plus one. And then on bottom here, we would be left with two x. So notice two x over two x cancels out, and then now when I plug in zero, I have two times zero plus one, which is equal to one. So what conclusion we can draw from this is that since the left and right side limits are equal, this tells us that the limit as x approaches zero is equal to one. So now that we've shown that the limit exists, we can investigate the function value. So we have the limit as x approaches zero if q of x is equal to one, and now we could find q of zero is equal to one. So what this tells us, we have the limit exists, the function is defined, and the limit, which is equal to one, is equal to the function value, which is equal to one. So this tells us that q of x is in fact continuous at x equals zero. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on determining continuity of piecewise functions. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.